Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another week of Saturday Night Special. And it's been a great second week of self-employment here at Booth Machine Shop. And as you can see, I'm back in my old coveralls. I was doing some cleaning out, been cleaning out the closets and uh, getting rid of my all my old clothes. And I had found a bag in there that had six of these uh, coveralls that I was wearing whenever I was still working at the old shop there before I had uh, <clears throat> taken the job there in motion. And I kind of forgot about that bag. And so I opened it up, pulled them out. And I'm like, man, there's all my old coveralls. And I went ahead and, and put one on and it fits great. I mean, this is a, this is a size 58 coverall. I don't remember what size that is as far as like, you know, 4X or 3X or whatever, but it fits good. This is the long sleeve one and fitting because today is the day that that Arctic cold blast come down and hit everybody in the country. And, and I woke up this morning, it was 29 degrees here in Pensacola. So it was pretty cold. And I've been out doing some, some work in here in the shop and making videos for you. And I'm really enjoying uh, being back in the old coveralls again. So I got several of these that I can wear. So that was one of my goals for dropping some of the weight is being able to get back into my old coveralls and, and using those for work out here. So there, there's a little update on that. So hopefully you've been enjoying the other videos on the, the uh, AWS. Well, I'm calling it the Weldmonger uh, Backbird Fixture Plate because it's for Jody. But I've been busy machining on that and we've got one more episode of that that's going to be following this episode of SNS so make sure you stick around for that and as far as the content that I have for today's SNS episode it's going to be a little bit more of a vlog style all right last week I stayed real busy uh, taking care of things around the shop here I've been doing some cleaning out and organizing and I, I took you along for the ride all right I got my shed cleaned out and I did a landfill run and I, I took the camera and thought it'd be fun to show you the landfill here and doing some cleaning out of the shop, some organizing, some getting some stuff out there. And also I went on a run to uh, pick up a cabinet that I found. So I'll show you that. And then uh, just some more of the organiz organization stuff around here that's been going on. So that's why I said it's going to be a little bit more of a vlog style this week. and. I've been working on some other organization, working on my milling cutters. So I've got some more footage to share with you uh, on the next s and s of you know some continuing coverage that I've been doing around here. And then I'm trying to, uh, in between the Saturday night specials, uh, continue sharing the machine work on the uh, back purge plate. And I've got some other content that I've been working on as well that I look forward to sharing. Uh, one of the ideas that I have uh, to start uh, bringing more content to the channel was to create some how-to videos. And I was talking to my friend Jason over at Fireball Tool. He and I kind of brainstormed on this. And, and um, you know, he, he brought it to my attention and, and it's been spoken in many comments is that, you know, I have so many videos and most of my videos are long run that sometimes the, the, little, the little golden nuggets of information that people really enjoy and, and sometimes they want to go back to is really hard to find on my channel. Although you can search on the main page using a little ma uh, my magnifying glass icon, you can search for certain keywords if there's something that you're hunting. But what I'm getting to is in some of these long run videos, I've got some things that I can share in a separate video. That way it's more easily searchable later on. You know, it may not be immediate, uh, but maybe down the road, there's something that you're searching for and this one little five or 10 minute video will pop up in a search feed pertaining to just one specific subject. So that's the idea behind the how to's. If I'm working on a big project and there's one, one machining aspect of it that I would like to take and separate into its own video, I'm going to do that and post it up as a how to video. And I'm going to create a playlist on my channel that will be titled, you know, how to's or a bombs, how to, and then all of those different subjects will all go in that playlist and it'll be a little easier to find down the road or, if, or if somebody's just out there searching for something, Hey, how do you do this? You know, that's what everybody does when they change the brakes on their car, right? They go on YouTube and say, how do you, how do you change your brakes on your truck? So it's kind of the same idea around here in the shop. So that's something that I'm going to be working on as far as some uh, new content for the channel 
moving forward and, and trying to separate a little bit of that from the long run videos. So here's our really cool viewer gift of the week. And you guys know how much I love those red stare at boxes. So Gabriel Johnston from Seattle, Washington, he sent this in to me and wanted me to have it. And uh, Gabriel is a Patreon supporter, so thank you very much for that, uh, Gabriel. And uh, he has also become a certified watchmaker the past couple of months, so that's really cool there too. So he had this mic and sent it in and wanted me to have it. So check this out. It appears to be brand new. It is a stare at number 204. I mean, you guys watching uh, know what the 204 mic is and what's significant about it. Like I said, it looks brand new. I don't know if it's used, if it has been used, if it was brand new or what, but it just appears to be new or unused condition. Even the case itself is like new. So the Stare at 204, you guys know yet what this is? So this is what Stare calls a quick adjusting micrometer. So instead of having a friction thimble on the end of it there, you have a button and you can depress that button and you can move the barrel in or out wherever you need to. Quick adjusting. So if you want to move on out and, uh, you know, measure around, you know, three quarters of an inch, you can move it on out to about 800 and, uh, you know, use your barrel for your final measurements. I think that's pretty cool. I've never actually used one of these before, but it's got a beautiful feel to it. It's got some great craftsmanship to it, and I'm going to enjoy using this, Mike. It goes right back into zero every time. So you just have to uh, you have to catch it properly, and you'll feel it kind of click in once you do. And I see that whenever you go to zero, kind of keep it above, keep it past the zero on the barrel and it come in and then you can bring it right back to zero every time. Very cool mic. Absolutely love it. So thank you very much, Gabriel. A uh, really nice and beautiful gift. And I hope that we can put this guy to use around the shop and I'm sure that we will. So thank you very much. Awesome gift. Early morning, about 6.30, I'm getting ready to head to the landfill. I've been doing some cleaning up around here. I spent the day yesterday going through my old shed right here and cleaning it out. I've had about 18 years of accumulation of junk in there and just kind of clean it out. And I also took the opportunity to load my trailer up with stuff from around the yard. And I'm getting ready to go to the landfill and throw all this junk away and try to make a little bit more room in my shed here for some more a uh, little bit of storage there some stuff get some stuff out of the shop and build a store in there so it's nice to be able to do this kind of stuff now <laughs> landfills are open during the weekdays so let's get to it a little cold down here in florida right now saying about 34 degrees outside pretty chilly I got my beanie on. Nice day to head to the landfill though. Oh look, we got the Wambalance. We see a lot of those up and down my street. where we're headed right over there that's the recycling plant that's where all the county recycle materials come to that's a new building they put up out there I haven't seen before 
So that's where your um, like tree debris will go. And they have a place for concrete out here as well. That must be part of the recycling plant there. That's what it looks like. I got it packed full. That's where you dump your concrete. big mountain all that is is trash I remember as a kid coming out here and it was not that tall it was actually like a hole in the ground CCC that's where we're headed citizens convenience center all right we made it out here getting ready to unload he said just throw all this stuff over into the dumpster right here. You got a tractor trailer. You can throw it all in. Right over there is where all the uh, hazardous waste goes. Oil, fuel, fluorescent lights, and tires, and batteries, and all that stuff. So we'll dump a bunch of that right over there. Well, there goes the old Rango wheels. Finally got them out from under the shop. And we got our old fluorescent lights, some oil, some old fuel, and some soap there. And this is where we put all that stuff right here. Some old fuel from uh, when we had the hurricane come through I'm afraid to put it in a car or anything but they got a jug right here that you can put old fuel and I think the uh, oil he said just sat down here they've actually got a drum right there for the oil I got all my waste oil dumped in the container there. Everything dropped off. We are ready to go. To get out of here. That's where you go whenever you got a whole trailer load you want to just dump off. You can go up there to the top of the hill, break it off if you want. Looks like they got the convicts out today cleaning up trash. There's the rates and what they take in. And mine was 30 bucks to dump today. There's our landfill experience. It's actually nice being able to get up early like you normally would go to work and you come out here, it wasn't crowded. You come out here on a Saturday because uh, they, they are open on Saturday mornings and 
that's when a lot of people are off work. So the, the place is full and you gotta wait in line. Sometimes it takes a while to get checked out because they gotta weigh you. But I like coming out here. It's nice being able to clean up, you know, do it about once a year, clean all the junk up out of the yard and all the crap that you've been hoarding that you don't need and just get rid of it all. So we're gonna leave, well, we're leaving, we're on our way. I'm gonna head over to Kevin's shop where he works my brother and I got some steel that I'm gonna be buying from them. I got some, uh, I got some shaper food to pick up. <laughs> so let's head over there. All right, we're at Rudd Weldon. This is where my brother works. I used to come out here a little bit way back in the day and deal with Charlie, but uh, it's been a long time, many years since I've been here. Maybe we'll get to peek at the shop. This is looking inside Rudd Weldon, 25,000 square foot. He's got a bridge crane on each side. This is exactly what I need right here, man. So there's Kevin, he's bringing the bridge crane down. I'm here to collect that piece of metal right there. Big chunk of square. And then there's another piece right over there, that one with a hole in it. Let me see if I can get that too. There's Kevin. Love He's gonna help me get that metal out. Nice overhead crane. A big marble saw. Looks like a big Mark III over there that they use. Yeah. Got a nice setup there. What are you videotaping? What am I videotaping? Yeah. Him. Why? Why? That's what I do, man. It's fun. That's my brother, Micah. My brother, Adam, Micah. You better say. You want to be on it too? Here you Hell go. no. <laughs> Everybody's going wondering, who's coming up talking to you, man? Yeah. This is what you do on YouTube, man. You just film everything. Oh. Yeah. He's a subscriber, huh? Yeah. We're trying to dig some steel out that, that uh, Charlie was going to sell me over here. there it is we got her on the trailer and uh, we're gonna go inside and check out the shop there's a project that Kevin's been working on is it some kind of railing you said is it like a platform yeah it's a, it's a platform it's gonna go around like a silo about 80 to 100 feet in the air okay and I'm starting the rails on it now the handrails I still got to measure and cut that one, cut this one. Yeah. I got all the legs cut, everything like that. I got to move on the back side of the radius as well. Okay. And I got a, I got a ladder out there that I'm going to use, 30 foot ladder. That's your uh, welder you're using? Yeah, that one. That one hasn't been hooked up in many moons, and I hooked it up uh, the day before yesterday. Okay. Yeah. I see he's got the setup, the little jib setups here so that you can yep. have your welder, your wire feeder out there where you want it. Yeah, what his plan was to be able to swing both sides in and be able to reach the middle of the shop. Yeah, so okay. That's you can work. He's got them down, all down the sides there. Yeah, he's got a nice setup. Yeah, a little jib setup to weld like pipe and stuff. Yeah, this is pretty nifty right here. Look at this. So all that set up and it's it looks like it's spinning the chuck here, right? Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's working. Got a nice gear reduction on it. Yeah. Yeah, 
it's got a variable speed on it. Look at that. That's cool. Got him a Geeka iron worker there. And he's got a nice Piranha, one of these machines that I'd love to have one day. Do all saw over there. I like how he's got all of his all of his racks made up. They actually go all the way out the door where we were earlier, so he can put material on outside and roll them into the shop. Even for this saw right here, this is his uh, marvel. And a nice setup for big pieces of steel. He even got, got a couple Ellis saws there too. Do a lot of rebar work here too. A lot of forming up. They got another little Ellis saw they use for cutting it. You can see over there they got a lot of forming that they do up for foundation work. Cutting table. A lot of plate steel. So he's got two bridges on this side. You got that one. The blue one is the newer one. And he's got the yellow one there, that's the original. And he was showing me over there, that yellow and red piece is a spreader bar that they had to build. And it was engineered so that he can use both, both of these bridges, the yellow one and the blue one, uh, together to make a lift. I guess down here on this end is Charlie's personal work area. <laughs> got his like his little hot rod. Thing. Got one on the rotisserie there. And yeah. Got another one up on the lift here. Look what I stumbled upon up here. He had this thing covered up. It's a little South Bend. I'm not sure the model. It's a small one, but it's a little South Bend lathe. But it looks complete. It's got the uh, quick change, quick change gearbox on it. Mm -hmm. I'll have to ask him about it. See what he's going to do with this thing. All right. So that was Charlie's shop here, Rudd Welding. It's cool of him to let me look around and show you guys a little bit of it. So we're going to go ahead and head on to the house with our big pieces of steel our shaper food it's gonna be awesome Man, this turned into a pretty cool vlog day actually to share with you guys this uh, it's Friday so we've already done the scrap yard we went to uh, Rudd to pick up that steel got to see his shop there visit with Kevin and this morning before I left I, I scanned uh, Craigslist and there was a Vidbar cabinet on there for sale which you never see on Craigslist. I, the, the last ones I saw on there, I bought. You saw me unload those in the shop. There was one on there this morning, and I was like, no way. So I, uh, I text the person, and they replied, said they still had it. So I told them I was interested, and it's a really good price too. They're not expensive. So I'm on my way there now to uh, pick up these cabinets, and pretty cool, so I'll, I'll show you what they look like whenever we're there. I think this is gonna be a really good cabinet for the mill tooling, the milling machine tooling. So you'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. So stay tuned. All right, there it is. I bought it. It's a it's a nice Vidmar cabinet. Take it around the other side so you can see it. We got our use the appliance dolly. Pulled it right up on there. We got a strap down. I've never seen one like this, but it's got a cabinet here that opens up, and it's got a shelf in the middle. So this will be really good for uh, storing some of the 50 taper tooling. And of course you can use the bottom for whatever tools, but that might be a milling cabinet. And I thought it was a good deal at 125 bucks. She said that she had other people interested in it. So I wasn't even worried about bargaining. I just gave her what she wanted and, and that was that. That was to keep the door from flying open on me whenever I was hauling it so all right time to get home by the way this is a beautiful neighborhood out here in Pace North Pace I didn't know that this was developed here there are four acre lots pretty cool beautiful out here nice and peaceful in the country 
neighbor there. They got them a nice shop in the back. So on the way back from picking up the cabinet, mom invited me over here uh, for some lunch. She made some some soup. Creamy chicken soup. Creamy chicken soup. Mm -hmm. But I I took it. I'm gonna have it for dinner. But anyway, I thought you guys might want to say hello to mom. Hey everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Glad so, to see my son today. <laughs> yep. Just opportunity to be able to stop by. I love being able to do what I want to do now. Yeah, so, he does. So it's been a it's been a good day. I've been taking the camera and they've been seeing everything I've been up to today. <laughs> <laughs> went to the landfill, then we went and got that cabin. We went to see Kevin at uh at Rudd and and then now over here to uh to get some dinner for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna head to the house now. <laughs> Y'all have a good day. <laughs> All righty, we made it back home, so I'm getting ready to get this vidmar cabinet unloaded and there's a couple other things i want to show you so this was my drum of cutting wall that i had stored up at work we had a little outbuilding and i had it up there so it, it's still good so i didn't want to get rid of it but it's a it's a whole drum of cutting wall and i want to put it in my shed another reason why i've been cleaning out the shed is so that i actually have some real room out there to store things like this and i got some other things inside the shop that I don't want to get rid of, but it's long-term stuff that's kind of sitting in the way. I want to get them out here in the shed and, and store them properly. So I also picked this up off Amazon, just showed up. Uh, this come yesterday. This is one of those little carts that go with, you know, you put the casters on it, you put your drum on it, you can roll the, the drum around. So I want to get that all set up in the shed so that I can move the drum out of my way and probably just get it over in the corner and, uh, and leave it be. So we're gonna work on that. So let's go ahead and get this thing off the trailer. I love having this ramp here, the, the concrete ramp. I'm easily able to unload things off of this trailer because of that. in here for now I've got an idea on putting it over here and uh, I'll show you that in a minute so this is the old welding cabinet right here and I still keep a lot of my welding supplies in there you know all my welding rods and gloves and all, all things welding go in this cabinet right there it's something that I've always wanted to replace and I'm hoping to get another style of cabinet to replace this one but it's still good so I really would like to put that new Vidmar right here and so this is going to go on the other side into the welding area over there. And I think we'll put the Vidmar there. I'm going to take this old shelf down. This radio has been on the fritz for a long time, and it really doesn't work anymore. So I think I'm going to toss it and uh, get me another speaker for out here, in the, out here in the shop. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean up this section right here. See, like all this mill tooling right here? Like all this stuff is what I want to be able to store in that, in that Vidmar. And having that upper cabinet, I think, is just a ticket for those 50 taper holders. I'll be able to lay those down in there, and, and then they'll, they won't be out here collecting dust like they always do. So pretty excited about being able to get a little bit more organization done right here. This is the other pile of goodies here that I wanted to transplant out to my storage shed. So that's what we're going to work on next. And I'm just going to roll it out there to the slab. And what I'll probably do is... Um, I'll use my big hand dolly to roll each individual piece out there to the shed and be able to stack it up in there. But you know, this is all stuff that that I don't want to get rid of, but I want it. I want it. I need to get it out of the shop, though. Is what I was going to say. This is a one of those. Um, uh, what do you call it? It's a light. It's one of those. It's one of those lights where they um, unload the trucks, like a, a dock light, I believe mounts on the wall and then they turn it and shine it into the back of a, a trailer and that was given to me by um, my friend jack hoing and it's been there i'm going to mount it over there by the lays eventually and hopefully that'll provide some good light but we've got our, our shaper table here there i've got a, another big rotary table there i got my little homemade welding positioner there another vice this is that belt sander that everybody always wanted to know about I got some, uh, I just got all kind of stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it out there in the shed and 
hopefully clear this space up a little bit and then i got a spot right here on the wall that was my last spot open and that's where the green cabinet is going to go the uh the welding cabinet will will sit right there I'm making a little headway on there i thought i would show you a couple things i haven't shown y'all before see these two blocks right here those are some that i machined a long time ago for the uh, horizontal bore mill at kerns machine them so they fit down in the t-slot there both of them are that way mill the knots there on the side so that you can use a, a toe clamp or a strap clamp to hold it down and the reason we had made these is we had a bunch of it was either pipe or tubing it was probably some tubing it was like a stack of them and they all had some kind of counterboard machined on the end of them it was a real quick simple operation and for whatever reason uh, dad wanted me to do it in the bore mill maybe the other ladies were tied up with some other jobs and the board mill wasn't being used but i remember we uh, machined these and then what we were able to do is just lay the tube down in there we machined this to fit the tube snug and we have a clamp to hold it down and then we had the boring bar set so you know it would come in there and make the counter board come out and it was it was on size so once you had all this set up it was a production job at that point and you could pull the tube out stick another one in run the boring head in there come back out you know and keep swapping them out so that's what we use these for and I, I always I, I save those just because it's you know it's good material it's steel so you can turn them into something else one day in the box here I, I got another piece of that that good 4140 this is the same piece of steel that I had machined that uh, toolmaker's vice a couple years back for the, uh, the giveaway that was the same piece of material there and there was a uh, one more big piece of square stock right there that I saved. I believe this one was cold rolled. And we used it as a spacer block on the end of the bore mill on the tailstock end. But good solid piece of steel. And then that's the original vise off my dad's old shaper. So I'm almost positive that his old shaper was a Cincinnati. That's what it come off of. Now this big old vise right here, that's another shaper vise. But I don't know what shaper it come off of this was something that my granddad had acquired at one of the one of the sales out on the base you know he would go to the uh, surplus sales and he would buy tooling for the shop and they never used this for anything but i used to use it on the board mill a little bit again this is the table off of the old shaper and another uh, vice right there that was given to me i had it work so i'm gonna get all this in the shed and get it out of my way where it'll be long-term storage away from the shop here's my little homemade welding positioner that i made up years ago just uh, found some materials around the shop and just whipped this up right here this was off of an old landa sewing machine like a industrial size sewing machine had like the o-ring style belt that drove it an old three jaw chuck that was well worn out and bell mouth perfect for welding on I just machined a tube there in the middle with bronze bushings in there and it, it always worked really good so this is just something that you could use to um, do build up work or whatever you can just tack it down to the table or clamp it down however you want it's always been a very useful tool I'm 
going to put this SP400 on uh, all the vices and this thing right here that I'm storing out here so they don't start rusting. Just do that all over the whole thing and that thing will stay out here and not ever collect any rust on it for a long time. man I got all that heavy iron stacked up right out here like I wanted and I'm ready to call it a day I'm tired I got my workout in for the day but I'm happy that this stuff is out here out of my way and being stored properly like I like I wanted it I got everything sprayed down with the uh, SP 400 so should help it uh, keep from getting rust on it but I got plenty more to do I got I got other big pieces of material that I want to bring out here and, and uh, keep out here in the shed just to get it out of the way. So that's it for now.